Hi, in this video, we will be talking about object detection on custom data set. Now, there are a lot of pre trained models available out there that does object detection or thousands of categories. But in many cases, you may want to build an object detection model on data set that is very specific to your business process. And that's where the real challenge comes in. And in some cases, you will not have a lot of data or a lot of labeling done. You may have only a few hundreds of uh, images with label data set that you want to take it and you want to build your own custom object detection model. And that's what we'll be doing in this particular video. Uh, just before that, like why do we uh, need to do object detection? Now think of a self-driving car. Right, like now when you are developing a self-driving car, you will typically uh, build and classifier to recognize whether there are human, whether there's a pedestrian, whether there's a cycling, whether there's a bicycler going on. Uh, but but it's not enough that you classify this. You have to exactly know within the frame where exactly an uh, pedestrian is walking, where exactly a bicycle is getting driven, so that your self-driving car can take action and uh, maybe brake accordingly or uh, drive accordingly. And similarly in a video surveillance camera, in a video surveillance camera, you may detect there is a human, but you also want to classify whether that human is holding any kind of uh, uh, a gun or any kind of harm devices, right? So you want to kind of understand what is it exactly within the image and that's where object detection uh, comes into play. So object detection as such deals with detecting instance of semantic objects of a certain class. The class can in this case can be a pedestrian, bicycler, and it is used to detect within an image or a video. Now, if you see this particular notebook, you can see like multiple uh, multiple uh, use cases of computer vision. One is the typical classification. Given an image, you are just classifying in this case whether there's a cat or not. We are not going to build a definitely a cat classifier. We'll, uh, we are going to build it with a decent data set. So I'm just showing this for an example. Right, and then the next comes in say, like uh, a classification and localization. Now, localization can also be similarly thought about op thought as object detection, uh, but the difference is the localization aims to locate the main, in this case, or the most visible object in an image. Right, that's what it is. But if you see on the next image, uh, the object detection basically what it does is it tries to find out all the object and their boundaries. Right. So uh, here there are there's a dog, there's a cat as well. It, uh, it it creates boundary for each of the object in the image and then tries to classify it whether it's a dog or whether it's a cat. So that's where object detection comes into play. And the localization is kind of an object detection also, but here it only takes the main visible image. All right. And then you are into instance segmentation. Now, segmentation basically is the task of doing pixel wise classification rather than just striking the boundary with bounding box. It is exactly identifying the boundary pixels and then uh, basically classifying it. Now, the, the main advantage of instance segmentation is uh, you are medical images. When you have a CT scan, whether you have an MRI scan, you exactly want to identify, um, identify the problematic area. So you do an image segmentation, right? So that's what, uh, that this, these are different use cases of computer vision. Now we are specifically going to talk about object detection. So we may be, uh, there can be multiple objects in an image or there can be a single object in the image. We are going to classify it. Right. So let's get started. I will talk about the data set as we go into the detail. Um, in this case, like I am uh, making sure in the collab, I have a GPU. Uh, remember this requires GPU. So uh, get a GPU instance and I am having an um, Tesla P100 assigned to me and I have 16 GB memory. In case if you hit out of memory in collab, uh, just rest just do a runtime factory reset runtime and make sure you get a GPU which has uh, which has higher memory. Right. Sometimes like if you get like 5 GB or 6 GB of memory, this can fail. Uh, even though the images are not high, object detection, object detection on custom data set requires a lot of compute. Right. And then what I'm doing is I am installing MXNet over here, uh, MXNet with CUDA 10.1. And then I'm installing auto glue on over here. Uh, just I'm also like kind of upgrading my IPython kernel. Uh, these are the two things I have already run it. Uh, it, the installation takes some time, so I just, want, I just don't want to hold on you guys in this particular video. So these two things is what I'm going to use auto glue on and you can see like how auto glue on simplifies object detection. In the underneath, it supports uh, your fast RCNN or your YOLO and other uh, object detection framework. 
but it really creates a wrapper and with like four or five lines of code you can literally build your custom object detection model right so i have run this and after that what i am doing is i am importing auto glue on uh, over here and then i am from the auto glue on i am a kind of importing object detection task auto glue on also supports image classification tablet data classification there are multiple support in this case i am going to use object detection so let me run this and the data set i am going to use is like nfpa data set the data set is available in this github repo but the problem is this github repo the data set is already created for yolo so if you are running a yolo you can directly use it now what i have done is uh, to make it very generic like you can run it for uh, pascal voc type or coco type there are multiple uh, types available in uh, your typical uh, the way you annotate the data so in this case uh, what i have done is i have taken this github repo and then i have created my own version which which resembles pascal voc data right so the you can you can find it in my github repo here you can download it and then you can use it for your purpose i am using the nfpa data set uh, let me run this and when i go to the details of it i will show you what this nfpa data set looks like so once i download this and then what i am doing is i am uh, calling this uh, auto glue on uh, unzip method uh, i am passing the zip file over here and it will unzip it so if you see the temp directory in my temp directory is a root directory it creates three folders annotation image set and jpeg images jpeg image contain all the image the annotation contains the bounding boxes so if you see on the top when we talk about a image if you see the uh, box over here these are called bound, bounding boxes and you have a this 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 a top coordinate and bottom coordinate and the sign coordinates are the coordinates so this is the x minimum and y minimum and this is the x maximum and y maximum right so these are these are kind of uh, how you define your uh, bounding boxes and those annotations are in the annotation folder you can download my data set you can open it the annotation are xml file it's easy to visualize it uh, you can see that around and then i have a third folder called image set which will have my uh, which will have a text file that contains my training set of images and the text set of images so what what data set i am going to use for training and what i am going to use for testing the uh, testing the particular output right so that's what it contains now what i am going to do is i am going to uh, create I, i have imported uh, the object detection task i am going to uh, take the file name uh, that is coming in i am going to append it and then i am going to create an data set i am going i have only one class over here you can have multiple classes as well in this case i have only one class so that is the nfp i am detecting whether uh, the image over that is a nfpa image or not right so that's what i am doing and then uh, next what i am doing is let me run this cell first and then let me run the top cell so this is how the image looks like and uh, first let me uh, go back to this cell i will show you exactly so this is the nfpa uh, data set image you see the kind of a diamond shape uh, image right so uh, nfpa is basically it's an a national fire protection associated association maintained database this are called nfpa 704 uh, uh, images right so this is standard system for identification of hazard of material for emergency response so you are seeing four different divisions over here the red blue white and yellow so in this case the red indicates fl uh, flammability so whether that particular content is highly flammable or not uh, the blue indicate what is the health hazard with the flammability right so so, so that's a huge fire say take so uh, the one one uh, tells you the intensity of the uh, flame the two tells you the health hazard whether it's safe or whether it's dangerous the yellow tells you the chemical reactivity and then the white contains codes for special hazard so these are numeric system uh, that is coded between 0 to 4 now take in the case of blue box the health hazard zero means it possesses no health hazard that's that's what zero is in this case the blue box says two the two means it is intense or continued but not chronic exposure when it says four it is a very chronic exposure so it's dangerous it it, it can even cause immediate uh, uh, death or something like that so this is the nfpa data set now this in this this can concede this can be there anywhere in the image or there can be multiple um, multiple version of the image in a single file right so we are going to kind of draw a bounding box for this this looks pretty visible pretty simple it's easy to draw but let's talk about the next image that we have printed over here if you see over here in this image 
you see this one here in the bottom there's a small logo of this one so we are we will see whether it's able to classify this image also so in this case there is nowhere the nfpa image this is the only place that's a nfpa image and it's very minute right so we are going to train an object detection model uh, on this custom data set and see how it performs now uh, if you go to the image data set, there are around 270 images. Out of that, if I take the test images out, for training, I have only 210 images. And a lot of object detection tasks are very intensive in labeling. Uh, the more you label, you may get a better model. So remember that, like, it's, it's, uh, the more data you feed in, uh, it is, while it's compute intensive, you may also get a very accurate and better model. But in this case, we are going to see how it performs with the 210 images I have. So I'm going to, uh, what I'm doing it over here is I'm setting a time limit uh, of 20 minutes. So you can set for five hours, six hours, seven hours, but, but since it's a demo video, I just want to uh, show you, uh, run quickly and show you. Um, but the 20 minutes also how it is, in case if it starts the iteration, second iteration in 19th minute, it's going to continue till the end and finish that iteration. It's not going to really uh, destroy and come out the session. Right. I'm training each of the iteration for 25 epochs. So what I'm doing on the task, the object detection cause I'm trying the fit method. I am passing my data set train variable. Now my data set train is what I defined on the top over here. It's nothing but uh, the root directory and the file name that is a temp NPA, NFPA. And within that it expects annotation, image set and JPEG folder. Right. So now here if you see i am passing the data set train i am telling my number of trials as two so basically try two trails you can give uh, as as complex your data set is and as much as resources you have you want to give more trails because it will try multiple model combination multiple hyperparameter and give you a very good model right and then i am telling okay what is my uh, uh, what what are the different parameters i want to run the learning rate with uh, I'm telling my NGPU per trail is one. I have only one GPU, but if you have multi GPU, uh, then then multi GPUs, then you give multiple GPUs over here. The time limit is what I have set on top. Uh, basically, I'm telling 20. So run it for 20 minutes and give me whatever model comes within 20 minutes. But as I said, it can extend beyond 20 minutes. If a new runner started, it will try to complete that run. Right. So let me start this one what i'm going to do is after i'm going to start this one i'm going to pause the video and then resume back uh, once uh, the training is complete it's going to take some time uh, for it to complete so i'm not going to keep you on hold uh, but let me get this started first now if you see over here it is uh, it is starting the experiment it is downloaded see it's going to use a pre-trained model so in this case it is using the yolo 3 uh, mobile net model Right. You can give multiple networks. There is one more hyperparameter here called net where you can give multiple other networks as well over here. But in this case, I'm using Olo3, which is the default and it's downloading the database and going to use that uh, to, uh, to fit on the custom data set. So let me uh, let it run. After this complete, I will continue and show you the output. So now the training is complete. Let's go and check the output of the training right now it took around uh, one hour to complete the training even though we had given 20 minutes a stop time what has happened the second run started before 20 minutes so it has to complete that and finally what it takes it takes the best model and uh, run, runs it uh, just as a training again uh, now if you see the output this is how the output looks like this was the first run uh, we gave we had given it for 25 epochs so it started from 0 to 24 the map for this that is the mean uh, precision right the mean average precision was around 87 so it's a decent enough model so the mean average precision is used for evaluating most of the object detection algorithm the map metric the mean average precision metric is the product of precision and recall of the detected bounding boxes the map typically values between 0 to 1 the higher the number the better it is now that is the average position the map uh, is usually computed by uh, aggregating the average position separately for each class so that's what the map is so the higher the map it is better and the class loss if you really see it's decreasing over time and this was the first iteration so the first trial we had given number of trials as two in the second trial you can see again it is uh, decreasing the loss is decreasing and the map is also 87 in the second iteration and then Finally, you can see like a graph where, where basically you can see that uh, the epochs and uh, how the uh, how the map is converging. So basically, the more the more epochs you give, 
the map is getting better maybe in the real world you want to train for even more time or even more epochs so you want to maybe increase the epochs so this gives you an idea there was a slight drop in between but that's fine after that it recovered it's kind of uh, increasing gradually right uh, we didn't have a lot of images sometimes that may be a overfitting so you want to feed in more images so that your objects are recognized properly so that is training now what i'm going to do is i'm going to test the asset so uh, uh, if you see like uh, when i talked about the image set folder on the top there are train and test so what i can do is i can do a task dot data set again i am telling basically my index file name test over here and then i am trying to kind of find the class and then i am telling evaluate on the data set test and let's see like how uh, the map is on a test data set and as i said it's in the voc format what we have uh, there are multiple formats yolo requires the output for bounding box to be to be in a certain format pascal voc database is in a certain certain format so let's see how the map on test data set is and the map on test data set is 81 uh, which is also pretty good there is slight overfitting 87 to 81 but i think we need more data because i have only 200 220 images that can be the reason let's now go and try to predict on individual image and see like how the prediction has been so i'm taking one of the image which is there in the folder that is a pos 230 now let me uh, let me uh, run the detector dot predict detector objects in the top i'm doing a predict and then if you see the output let's see like if you see basically there are four different objects uh this is the uh, this is the uh, npfa uh uh or the nv400 object right so 704 uh the image that we are trying to classify nfpa so here you can see there are four and all the fours are classified and that is like a percentage on uh the night this 95 percent confident this is 85 percent 88 percent confident right this is pretty easy because the image is focused over that let's go and try some image where uh, the focus is completely not on the image in this case if you see there is a huge text and the image is in between there's a 74 percent uh, confident that the image was detected let me try and uh, go for even more complex image this time and this is the one i show you right the, the basically the npfa was very small and if you see my previous image on the top you can see it detected that small image it's it's covering up uh, I, I maybe have to zoom in the image uh, but it has done with 35% confidence. Uh, but but still, it's able to detect uh, yeah, even in a uh, small uh, in a small resolution, right? What I can do is once this model, I can just save the model as a pickle file, and then that's what I'm uh, doing over here. I'm telling like, okay, the detector or save model, and then I can again like import the detector, and I can load the model, and I, then I can I can maybe deploy it anywhere else and uh, uh, do the inference on it. So one, once I do a ls, you can basically see the model dot pickle file is there. So that's about custom object detector. It was it was pretty easy. If you see the actual step, if you take the import out and everything, it was hardly like four or five lines of code. So auto glue on really makes it easy uh, to do an object detection. You can do it directly with the YOLO as well. That is as well easy. Uh, if you're directly running on YOLO, you need to have a different uh, bounding box uh, format. Uh, but but. This, this will get you started with any custom data set. Uh, thank you.